guys welcome or welcome back to my channel this is sandra and i make videos all about technology having a career in cybersecurity, as well as work vlogs so definitely check out the other videos on the channel if you're interested and if this video was helpful to you please give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this okay so one of the first cybersecurity videos i made on this channel was actually how to get started in cybersecurity with no experience and i can definitely link that below in the description but that's actually my most popular video by far on this channel so i definitely think that it was helpful but i wanted to add on top of that one by adding a bit more about how to actually find a job an entry-level cybersecurity job without any prior experience and these tips are exactly what i use to find a job in cybersecurity after graduating from college without any cybersecurity background like i had no cybersecurity internships experience and one of the key things i want to start with here is linkedin networking and i know this like isn't that relevant to cybersecurity specifically but this is something that i find is super important when you're trying to like reach out to people or like cold emailing someone and most people don't respond to those so one of the first things that you should do um since this usually takes like a longer period of time is to find someone in whatever company or whatever uh role or job that you're trying to get into on linkedin so like cybersecurity analyst and look up that from like facebook or something or whatever company that you're interested in and basically Basically look for whoever is in that role and then connect with them and sometimes they won't connect back that's okay that's why there's multiple people you're gonna be like shooting your shot to and basically you're gonna try to connect with them um, maybe you can have an intro and then after a while um, they're gonna be posting different things or liking different things or or maybe they got a new job and they posted it or maybe they wrote a LinkedIn article so make sure that you engage with whatever content or whatever things that they're posting and after a few weeks a month or two of that they're gonna kind of get used to seeing your name pop up on their notifications on their phone it's like oh sandra has commented on your thing like saying congratulations on your new role or something like that so that is basically going to get like your foot in the door for a warm connection rather than like a cold email or a cold message on linkedin especially when it comes to like sometimes i'll get messages initial messages from people who are trying to connect and asking me for a job at whatever company i'm working at and then i don't always end up connecting because i feel like they don't really know me so i feel like this way is the best approach in terms of trying to get like an inside look and even if you don't reach out to them for a job you can always reach out to them and say hey can i potentially learn more about what you're doing would you be interested in hopping on a zoom call and explaining more about how you got to your roles so i can learn more about this career path because this is something that i'm really interested in so i definitely think that this is one of the big starting points especially if you're going towards people who are already in cybersecurity roles. Like for example, in my company, there are roles that open up, but then if you're already on the team, it's easier for you to refer someone and have that person be interviewed rather than someone who's just directly applying to a job on the website, which honestly, I don't want to say that it's a bad thing, but I've applied to hundreds of jobs on websites and they don't always get you anywhere because there's just hundreds and thousands of people applying and sometimes it's hard to stand out. So that's why it's easier to go the LinkedIn route or like any networking route that you can choose rather than just applying directly on the website. Like it's nice to have like a contact who can kind of guide you and give you some advice or a recommendation or some kind of referral. And of course, I'm not saying everyone will give this to you, but honestly, you have nothing to lose by doing this. Okay, so after that, maybe you have some interview lined up or maybe you have a networking call with someone. And the next few things are gonna be all about the job application process. So anything from your resume, your cover letter, experience on your resume, what you actually put on there is really important, obviously. But let me just start with experience. So my previous video is definitely very helpful for that. So I'm not gonna repeat everything for you guys, um, but definitely check that out in terms of what experience that you can get for free to get your foot in the door and stand out. But one key thing to note is that I never had any cybersecurity internships or previous actual experiences or side projects ever on my resume when I was applying to jobs. And I also had a video that I made for my resume that got me my first software engineering internship. And if you guys didn't know, I am mostly from a developer background and not cybersecurity. So I can link that video below. So basically if you have nothing on your resume that says security on it. So before I get into what you can do for free to get that cybersecurity experience on your resume, the first thing is to see what's on your resume that can be kind of related to cybersecurity. So for example, my software engineering internship, um, we were developers, it was full stack, but the project that we created was basically an application that basically helped give people access to certain data that may have had different confidentiality levels. So in a way, even though I wasn't really interacting with like the confidential data or um, finding ways to protect it or anything like that it kind of gave me that talking point to talk about yeah we created this app to basically only allow people who could view certain data to view that data so whatever level of access they had is all they saw on whatever pages that we had in the application and even though that wasn't you know 
any cybersecurity stuff, um, I was still able to talk about it from a cybersecurity standpoint and then go from there to say, okay, so these were the benefits of protecting that data from people who didn't need to see it. So like it's basically on a need to know basis and you can always link it back to like the CIA triad, which is confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So this mostly focuses on availability and confidentiality where I'm able to provide whatever data is necessary to the people that need it so it's available for them as well as making sure that data is confidential to those eyes that only need to see it and not showing everyone like the confidential data just because they have access do this application so tying it in in that cybersecurity point of view even though i really didn't have any cybersecurity experience from that project was really important and this could come from anything of course it's a lot easier if you come from a technology background in a way where you can talk about protecting your code protecting any api services or encrypting anything it's still helpful to kind of give that person whoever you're interviewing a perspective of yes i'm thinking about protecting whatever clients or customers and data that exists and a lot of times it's that gut feeling or that intuition that comes from years of experience from other jobs or experiences that you've had that really can help boost you in a cybersecurity role too okay and in terms of actual free experience that you can get online of course you can definitely check out capture the flags hack the box on um, the damn vulnerable web app integrity as well as a bunch of different websites that i can link below and these are all different challenges that you can do to like hack a website and of course it's illegal to actually like hack someone's live website i don't believe that you can do that without some kind of contract saying that you're testing it um, or like getting approval from the actual application or website owner um, so yeah definitely don't just go around and hack random people's websites but you can definitely check out these sites below to kind of get an idea of what you can do and don't worry if you're a beginner i am pretty much still a beginner as well and there are a lot of guides out there that can help you in terms of solving all of these capture the flags or hack the box challenges and they're basically just ways for you to analyze some kind of web application and look for vulnerabilities and of course if you're just starting you don't really know exactly what to look for but over time you're gonna eventually note the red flags and the things that kind of look a little strange on a website and know where to go from there and i can also link below the OWASP top 10 which is the top 10 vulnerabilities for web applications and that list is definitely really helpful because a lot of pen testing teams and ethical hacking teams in various companies look for these vulnerabilities because they are the most common and they are also the most exploitable so you definitely want to check out that list and learn more about what you should actually be looking for on a web application and of course definitely check out my previous video on this because i went a lot more in depth and didn't just skate through all this but i didn't want to like spend that much time re-talking over points that i already made okay so in terms of resumes and cover letters you can definitely check out the resume that i had on my previous video that i made for reviewing my resume but again it all goes back to tying back any previous experiences that you had with some kind of cybersecurity focus or cybersecurity perspective and one thing that i could also recommend to start with is to try to find a free certification program online for example in college my school had a certification for computer security and digital forensics but this certification wasn't like nationally acclaimed it wasn't um by like a organization that was very official um it was just one given by my school and all i had to do was take two extra classes uh so i basically took a network security class as well as digital forensics and these classes while they weren't necessarily like hacking or cybersecurity focused i did learn a bit about network security so that was definitely a very rough beginner course so definitely check online for any free certifications or uh, courses that you can go through and put that on your resume so then it's free and you don't really have to like pay for a security plus which is also very helpful i took the security plus exam now when i applied for my first entry level cyber role i did not have the security plus certification but i recently took it last november and i have a video on the resources that i used to study and pass that exam and this is the 501 so definitely check that out if you're interested i believe the 501 is retiring this summer but if you take it then it lasts three years so it's up to you if you want to take the 501 or the 601 version the 601 version does have a bit more material in it and i believe the main difference is that there is a new mobile security section that you need to study for and then going back to cover letters i want to be the first to say that i have never submitted a cover letter for a cybersecurity role and i actually am not a huge fan of cover letters because I feel like it's so easy to mess up. So there are those who are really good at writing cover letters that can make you really stand out. But but if you think about it, a cover letter is kind of like 
it's kind of like your first impression if someone reads that and sees that you copied and pasted a cover letter that you had from like 10 other jobs um, that were posted to 10 other companies and 10 other roles like a recruiter can see that from a mile away like they're used to doing this they're used to looking at resumes and cover letters and they know that when something is just a copied and pasted cover letter of your background your experience what you're looking for and then i'd love to join xyz company for xyz role thanks Sandra like you know like that's very very generic so I would say if you're not a good writer or you don't have a great cover letter that you are proud of and that you don't have anything very specific to say about this company or this role then you probably shouldn't include a cover letter because it's better than having a cover letter be seen as super vague super general not really seeming like you're that interested in the company anyway because you didn't write anything specific about the company or the role itself you just wrote about your background what you're looking for and you're interested in joining and thank you for their time like that's so generic and it just doesn't make you look that good either so if anything i would highlight the experiences on your resume and then if you really want to write a cover letter because this role is something you really want then that's when you write the cover letter like i feel like the cover letter should be for the roles that you really really are interested in so you can put in time to write that cover letter and that's the most important thing first things first do not write a copy and pasted cover letter because a recruiter is going to see it and be like okay well this says nothing about our company obviously they haven't done any research about it are they really that interested unless your resume is like super stand out then you know like i just feel like a cover letter can be a really it could be a really hit or miss situation maybe i just have a bad perception of cover letters because i used to write cover letters for my software engineering roles that i applied to and i never got an answer back from anyone <laughs> that i wrote a cover letter for and again, it was because of that copy and pasted, even though I did kind of switch up my wording a bit for all the applications to talk about the teams I want to join in the company, what products I like from the company too. Yeah, so it might just be me. Definitely take that advice with a grain of salt. Okay, so the next thing is the actual job hunt. So I noticed that a lot of my friends who are applying the jobs, they're kind of just applying as they go. But I really think that the method to how you apply is really important because if you're just like searching the web and you see, if you see like a news article about a company and you're like, huh, I wonder if they're hiring. Like that takes a long period of time. And a lot of the times you don't have enough time to do the background research before applying to the actual role. So for this, I usually start off by researching all the companies that I want to apply to. For example, when I was applying to full-time roles outside of college, I had a list of about 100 or 150 companies that I knew I wanted to apply to. And obviously this list didn't take overnight to create. Uh, I've been growing this list for like weeks or months or honestly even like throughout all of my college years or since junior year at least and every time i would try to apply for a company that i really liked or they came to talk in my school and i felt like it was a really nice place to work potentially then i would write it down and even if they reject me uh my sophomore junior year then i'll apply again in my senior year and i'm okay with like dealing with that rejection and just applying the year after so i really think that creating or curating that list first is important so then even in the future when you are looking for a new job then you'll have this list to go back to and think hey so these are the companies i really wanted to join maybe i can look back on them and try to see what open roles that they have so definitely start out with that and another way is to just look specifically for the roles that you want to do for example if you want to be a pen tester then you only look up pen testing roles in like the new york area or in the california area and those are also really helpful in terms of pinpointing companies like that you may have never heard about because honestly a lot of cybersecurity companies are a bit smaller so that could be really helpful in doing some research on smaller companies or local companies or even mid-sized companies and another piece of advice for job hunting is that don't let rejections get to you. Um, I've been rejected hundreds of times from jobs that I've applied to that I really, really wanted, um, that I've gone the final round on, that I thought I was gonna make it, but I didn't, or that I thought I could get an interview, but I didn't even get an interview and things like that. So, you know, like everyone goes through those failures and no, not even failures. Like if anything, I would call it a success because first of all, you went for the opportunity and you tried it. And even if it didn't work out, doesn't mean that it won't work out next time that you apply. So just keep that in mind. Don't let rejections get to you because it can definitely be a bummer seeing like you applied to like 20, 30 applications the day before and maybe the next day you already got rejected. But sometimes that could be a blessing in disguise. So don't let 
a door close bring you down because that just means another door is going to open so this last piece of advice that i want to talk about is conferences so i've mentioned it on my channel before but if you're new here may or may not know that i that i got my previous internship at jp morgan chase as well as my cybersecurity role from the grace hopper conference which is the largest conference for women in computing in the world so i definitely think that conferences are so much the way to go when you're looking for a job as well of course right now things are virtual but by the time the world opens up again conferences are such a big way to get a job so for example normally when i'm applying to jobs maybe i'll get an interview every week or so but with my experience at grace hopper i basically had like six interviews lined up in that one week alone and the conference is only two to three days most conferences will be about two or three days and they're basically like a career fair on steroids where all the big companies are there especially if you're at a nationwide conference or an international level conference you should definitely look into defcon rsa sans black hat there's so many cybersecurity conferences out there as well as b-sides which are free to attend and they're a bit more local and smaller scale conferences so definitely look into that because that's where thousands and thousands of professionals in cybersecurity go to network meet people learn and present information as well as companies that are there to hire for different roles that they have so it's a really good opportunity to network as much as possible and the only reason why i was able to get those jobs was because of the conference that I attended. And this is helpful for college students as well as people who are already into their career. Because you're a college student, then you get to go to these conferences and interact with people that may not have any connection with your school. So you basically get to widen your scope of whatever companies that you can talk to and interact with in person rather than just submitting a job form online. And if you're already in your big career, you can join as a participant or a speaker or maybe even get a sponsorship to attend. And there's so many networking sessions after the actual conference in the day that you can attend and just meet different people and who knows who you're going to meet because honestly the network effect in terms of getting a job is so much more effective than just applying online so yes apply in as many jobs as you're interested as possible but of course go out there go to these conferences these events even the meetup events in your local city or your local state level to kind of meet the people who are in those roles that you want to be in and learn how they got there okay so i talked a lot in this video thank you guys so much for watching and i know it's like a bit of a change of background in the back and normally this room makes my camera super blurry i don't know if you can like see me clearly but hopefully you can because i feel like my face blends in with the wall <laughs> and it just like confuses the camera but yeah i feel like this is a very spring vibe so maybe i'll start filming in this location a bit more but yeah thank you guys so much for watching i hope this was helpful definitely drop any advice that you guys may have in terms of finding your job in cybersecurity or entry-level roles in the comments below to help the community and as always thank you guys so much for your support i'm super thankful for all of you if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications i post videos every wednesday at 2 p.m and sundays at 12 p.m and hopefully i'll see you guys in my next video bye